What is going on guys, Nathan here with another Magic the Gathering video. In this video, I wanted to show you guys my Boros Red White Pillow Fort uh, Commander deck, which is a deck that focuses on sort of building your battlefield in a very defensive way and uh, persuading your opponents to attack each other before they can attack you. And uh, even if they do not agree to attack each other, there are plenty of cards in here that will force them to attack each other. So things like incentives, giving them creatures, uh, making them pay mana if they decide to attack you, that kind of stuff. Um, it th th This deck plays a lot to the social aspect of Commander, which is why part of the reason why it's so fun, because, you know, you can afford friendships, alliances, you can make enemies, you can target a particular enemy who might be um, throning at the time, so it's just very fun deck overall, and uh, usually red-white combat focus decks um, are also a blast to play. Now the first thing that I want to point out and usually the thing that I the first thing that I like to point out with these decks is the cost. So uh, according to TCG this deck costs around a hundred dollars. Um, a lot of these cards are pretty cheap because they come from the Commander 2014 white deck. Um, but you know I want to you know keep that price pretty relevant. If you want there are a lot of dual lands that you can add but that's going to obviously hike up the price uh, in response but um, one of the things that kind of bothers me on tapped out is you you know you you see some of these decks that are featured that are like oh my deck is so awesome look at this deck it's so great but when you look at the actual cost of the deck it's like seven hundred dollars and uh, I personally don't know anybody who would pay seven hundred dollars for a casual commander deck but Something around the $100 price mark, especially if you already own some of these cards from Commander 2014, um, is is definitely within uh, a, a moderate price range, depending on um, how committed you are to the idea of this deck. Now, uh, first of all, we'll go into the Commander of the deck. Um, this is not a win-based Commander. Um, you don't really need to rely on your commander for the win, especially being she is a 7 cost. That is the only downside of this commander is that she is so high cost, uh, and thus she is subject to a lot of removal or control if you happen to be playing a, a, against something like a blue player with some counter spells. Otherwise, uh, she is flying for strike 5-5 five, five for 7. If a source would deal damage to an opponent or, or a or a permanent, I can't talk today, an opponent controls that source, deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. So, you got your buddy over here, you know, he's he, he's got, you know, I always use, like to use uh, cards like Terra Stomper for these sort of examples. So, you got your green buddy over here sitting next to you, you got some alliance going with him, and he swings with his 8-8 Terra Stomper at, at, a, at, an, at another opponent at the table. All of a sudden, that Terra Stomper is going to be doing 16 damage, which is awesome. Now, if he decides to turn against you, well, that same Terra Stomper is now only going to do 4 damage, which is pretty awesome. Um, because her second ability is, if a source would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent half that damage rounded up. So, basically, with this card on the field, your opponents are going to be killing each other twice as fast and killing you half as fast, which is unbelievably good. Um, she is definitely a staple to the deck, although you don't need her to win, which is exactly what a commander is supposed to be. All right. Uh, mana cost. Well, I'll just go over the mana cost really quick. Um, pretty standard curve. You got your... Uh, the average, if we look down here, is about 4.23. Pretty standard curve for Commander. You know, you peak out around the 3 or 4 mark, and you got uh, some extra 5, 6, 7s for the late game. Um, definitely just good mana cost, or uh, mana curve there. Um, we'll start with the creatures, being they are the most plentiful in the deck. Um, okay, so we have the classic Angel of the Dire Hour. You can cast this from your hand to exile all attacking creatures. You can use it defensively, or even if you want to use this and finish off an opponent, make sure they don't have any defenses left. That is good good as well. Uh, Archon of Justice, if we scroll up here, Archon of Justice 5544, um, this acts as combat bait pretty much. So if you have this on the field and you know that your opponents have uh, an, an assortment of much stronger creatures, then they might not want to 
focus you as much because you like this thing is ready to die and therefore you can then exile one of their creatures um, or even target permanence so um, if if you have something like you know something ridiculous like somebody managed to farm like a stoneforge blade for example well all of a sudden they don't want to give up something like a stoneforge blade and uh, this is definitely th this will definitely deter a lot of combat directed towards you uh, avatar of slaughter so typically the red cards in this deck are the ones that really provoke combat uh, and especially between your opponents. So Avatar of Slaughter, all creatures have double strike and attack each turn if able, which is good because um, a lot of the things in this deck have, um, so like, stuff really can't attack you that well so if your opponents are obviously attacking each other with creatures with double strike well they're gonna all of a sudden kill be killing themselves twice as fast and if you combo it with something like Gisela um, your opponents are gonna be basically killing themselves four times as fast which is pretty cool uh, Ballista Squad for cost to two you can pay X and tap it and it will deal X damage to target attacking or blocking creature uh, once again another thing to sort of deter enemies from from attacking you just like Archon of Justice. Blazing Archon, 9 cost, the highest cost in the deck if I do recall correctly. Uh, creatures just can't attack you so um, this is great obviously if it hits the field but uh, it is subject to removal and um, that's a little bit sketchy being it's a 9 cost being it's so expensive but if you manage to get this then um, you're gonna have a ball of a time. Is that even a phrase? I don't even know. Uh, Boros Reckoner, you pretty much just a three cost. Whenever it, he is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target creature or player. And it will gain first strike until end of turn for an extra mana. Uh, once again, another combat deterrer. I don't even know if that's a word, but we're going to go with it. Um, so, you know, if you're going to swing at me with your Terra Stomper 8 8 as the classic example, then all of a sudden. You know, he's going to die, but all of a sudden, that Terra Stomper might die because his combat damage is going to be reflected right back at it. So, uh, another good deter creature. Bridget, Hero of Kinsbale, first strike, four cost, two, three. You can tap it, and it will deal two damage to each attacking or blocking creature target player controls. This is really good to get rid of tokens. Um, you got, if you have a lot of soldiers, if, if an opponent has a lot of zombies, stuff like that. Um, she will definitely come in useful. Darian, or Darian, King of Kjeldor, 6 cost, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you're dealt damage, you may put that many 1-1 one, one soldier creatures into play, which is awesome because um, not only is it good in the first place, so if an opponent w manages to slip by some damage to me, um, I'm going to have a decent defense next turn, and if you combo it with... Um, well, actually, all right, yeah, so anyway, he is a good, g very good creature. Um, he is a little bit expensive. He's like a 4 to $5 card, I believe, so he is one of the more expensive cards um, in the deck. Fumiko, the low blood, 4 cost 3, 2, and it will have Bushido X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. So, um, and then additionally, creatures your opponents control attack you attack each turn if able so another card that will force your opponents to basically attack each other but the boshido is also very nice because um especially facing a lot of token decks which is typically what you run into into commander or um in commander is a lot of you know uh white swarm uh zombie stuff like that and um the boshido x will definitely come in useful Gisela, the commander, uh, Hunted Dragon is one of the creatures in the deck that actually gives your opponents creatures. So, uh, 5 cost 6-6, six, six, Flying Haste, and when it comes into play, you can put 3 two, 2 knight creatures with first strike into play under target opponent's control. Now, the idea is that you basically um, perhaps don't attack that opponent, but... The idea is that that opponent can then use those creatures um, against somebody else because um, of the additional like enchantments and stuff that will prevent uh, your opponents from attacking you. Indomitable Ancients, just a nice little wall creature that can also attack if it really wants to. 4 cost 210. Um, just a good card overall. Dreth Leonine Titan is a 6 cost 4 7, and when it blocks, it will get plus 7 plus 7 and become an 11 14. So, a huge, huge wall that is almost unkillable um, unless you run into heavy removal or uh, death touch or something like that. And you can pay 1 white mana and it will gain protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. So, if you want, um, if you. 
really want to get um, basically block like a death touch i'm pretty sure it can block a death touch without uh, dying if you pay that extra mana um and you can also make sure that its combat damage slips through um assuming that you are well actually yeah you can pay the white mana cost multiple times to gain protection from multiple colors so if you really want to get his four damage through you can definitely pay the mana cost for that Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, 5 cost 5, 4 whenever a creature an opponent control attacks. If you're the defending player, put a 3-3 creature token onto the battlefield unless that creature's controller pays 3 colorless. Now, this is for individual creatures, so whenever a creature an opponent control attacks, meaning that if they send um, 4, I don't know, 4 tokens after you, then you are going to have 4 3 3s unless that... Um, unless you, that, that opponent pays three colorless per token. So, super defensive card, really nice, and you can even farm this card if you really wanted to. Um, excuse me, which is pretty great. Uh, Lieutenant Kurtar is another uh, uh, combat deterrer. I think that's a word. Uh, Lieutenant Kurtar, three cost, two, two flying. You can pay two, sacrifice it, and remove targeting attacking creature from the game. Um, so basically, the same effect of um, the Archon of Justice, but you're going to have to pay that extra mana, um, which is, I mean, it's still a good deterrer, but um, that, that extra mana can be a little bit annoying. Um, still a good card, though. Mana Charge Dragon, 6 cost 5-5 five, five with Flying and Trample. So, um, the Join Forces effect is where pretty much where each player that's in the match will add any amount of mana to this card. And this card specifically will get plus X plus 0 until end of turn where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. So, this is the sort of social aspect of Commander. Um, if, if people are gunning for a certain player on this board, well, all of a sudden you send this guy right after that player he has trample you get your friends or whoever to um help you basically take out this take out this person because they know because they also want this person to be eliminated from the game and um you're going to if if they agree and, and you have some allies you're going to be dealing a lot of damage mentor of the meek three cost uh this is for some extra card draw whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control you may pay one colorless if you do draw a card um now the purpose of this is that um a lot of these creatures are actually under th three power and toughness i believe or power i believe is the trigger on this uh so power two or less um you might get some tokens for example um with darian you might get the trigger on his tokens or something like that so just some extra card draw in there um which is always nice which is always nice Michiko Konda, Truth Seeker, uh, 4 cost 2-2, two, two. whenever source an opponent controls deals damage to you, that player sacrifices a permanent. So another creature that deters uh, opponents from seeking combat with you, uh, sacrificing a permanent. They can sacrifice a land, but, you know, that adds up after a few... Um, after a few sacrifices, and it is also whenever a source an opponent controls, meaning that if they send, you know, a couple tokens, maybe two, three tokens, and you let those tokens through, you take the damage, then all of a sudden they have to sacrifice two to three permanents depending on the tokens uh, that they sent, which is pretty cool. Mind Bearer, three costs, you can tap it, sacrifice it, and destroy target attacking creature. Um, not the best combat deter, but I'll take it. Um, yeah. Mirror Entity, so um, this is one of the cards in the deck that I added because um, I needed some... Um, it's basically great to, to have people not attack you, but when you actually need the strength in combat... Um, this this is one of the cards that will help with that. So you can pay X mana, creatures you control become XX and gain all creature types until end of turn. So um, if you really need to finish off somebody and you really need to turn your, I don't know, your 2-2s two or 3-3s three or whatever into um, something much stronger, then that is what this card is for. Oracle, Envic, 2 cost. So this is pretty complicated. Target opponent chooses any number of creature creatures he or she controls. During that player's next turn, those creatures have to attack, and no other creatures can attack. At the, oh, excuse me, at the end of that turn, destroy each of the creatures that did not attack. So this card basically says that um, you like 
if you don't choose any creatures that have to attack, then those creatures will die. Um, so it's another combat forcer, really forces your opponents to go after each other once again, um, but it is during their next turn and not your turn, obviously, because it needs to be their turn to attack. Uh, Sarah Avatar, this is a creature that is um, another Similar concept as the mirror entity, um, something really big to finish off your opponents. Um, Sarah Avatar tends to get big really fast, uh, especially in Commander when your life totals do start at 40. So, you know, having something ridiculous like a 30 30, if, if you happen to have 30 life, is pretty awesome. Silent Sentinel, um, not the most efficient creature. He's a 7 cost, 4 6 with flying, and whenever he attacks, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, the, the reason why I included this card was because you have. There, there are a lot of enchantments in this deck, and you might be facing heavy enchantment removal, um, uh, just because that's. That's kind of the way that commanders played. Like a lot of people run more artifact and enchantment removal in commander than in uh, normal game modes, because enchantments and artifacts do tend to be a lot more powerful in commander, which is this, which is also true for this deck. So um, this guy is just sort of like a backup um, to get those out of the graveyard back onto the field. Uh, Spurn Mage, Spurn Mage Advocate is a one cost one one, and you can tap it. Return to two target cards from an opponent's graveyard to his or her hand, and you can destroy a target attacking creature. Another combat deterrer, and uh, the good thing is that you can return two target cards, meaning that if they have some land from some discards uh, into their graveyard, then you can give them land, which is basically nothing useful. Sun Titan, classic white card, 6 cost 6-6 six, six with Vigilance, and you, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, now, as you can see here, I have quite a few cards that are converted mana cost 3 or less, um, so decent amount to choose from. Unfortunately, a lot of these cards are above the uh, 3 mark or more, but um, he definitely has his uses, and I'm sure that if he ever actually comes into play um, in a situation that his ability will definitely come um, uh, be useful. Sunblast Angel, 6645 the with flying, and uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy all tapped creatures. So a nice little board wipe for um, your opponents who have perhaps uh, either been fighting each other or been fighting you. So um, you can definitely get rid of maybe a pesky creature this way that's maybe untargetable, or just wipe an opponent's field. Uh, trap, trap Runner, 4 cost 2, 3, and you can tap it. Target attacking unblocked creature becomes blocked. So that means that they basically don't do combat damage, which is pretty awesome. So um, if you... Uh, I don't know if it would work on something like Trample, but if some if, if somebody sent, you know, like a 5-5 five, five, uh, flyer at you or something, you can go ahead and tap this, and that creature is blocked now. And um, I I would assume that it doesn't deal combat damage, like, at all. It's j it, it's basically just not in combat anymore, which is pretty great. Uh, Warmonger Hellkite, 6 cost 5-5, five, five, another card that makes, your, ma makes all creatures attack each combat if able, and you can uh, pump it up to give attacking creatures one, plus 1, plus 0. So this means that you can pump up your own creatures, which is that, um, again, that sort of needed strength to finish somebody off, or you can pump up somebody somebody else's creatures multiple times if you really want to uh, help an opponent finish off another opponent. <laughs> Windboard Muse is a 4 cost 2 3 with flying creatures can attack you unless their controller pays 2 colorless for each creature he, he or she controls that's attacking you. Now this is basically the creature form of uh, Ghostly Prison which is pretty much the exact same thing. Um, something like, th um, this is the sort of card that really kind of drains your opponent's mana because, um, and, and also really deters your opponents from attacking you because those that mana adds up really, really fast, um, and it and it works exceedingly well against token decks, which are going to be coming at you in uh, large numbers. So, uh, those are the creatures, 29 creatures, decent amount for a commander deck, and now we move on to the sort of meat and 
uh, meat and potatoes of the deck, the enchantments, which are going to definitely be helping you out a lot. Aura of Silence, three cost artifact and enchantment spells your opponent's play cost two more to play. So a little bit of a deterrence from playing artifact and enchantment spells because those can be a little bit annoying to deal with and you can sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So a little bit of artifact or enchantment removal for yourself. Orification is a great card for cost whenever a creature deals damage to you, so you unfortunately have to take combat damage, uh, put a gold counter on it, and this gold counter makes those creatures walls, which means that they cannot attack, which is so good <laughs> that this is combat deterrence times 10. Crescendo of War, four cost. At the beginning of each upkeep, put a Strife Counter on Crescendo of War. Attacking creatures get plus one plus zero for each Strife Counter on Crescendo of War. Blocking creatures you control get plus one plus zero for each Strife Counter on Crescendo of War. So this means that your opponents attacking each other will get uh, will be doing extra damage, kind of similar to the Warmonger Hellkite ability, uh, but it will kind of help you out because your blocking creatures will do that exact amount of damage right back to any creature that decides to attack you, which is a pretty great enchantment. Curse of Bloodletting, Enchant Player. If a source would deal damage to Enchanted Player, it deals double that damage to that player instead, which is so awesome. It's basically uh, Gisela for a specific player, and it's really hard to get rid of these type of enchantments if you're not running much enchantment removal. Uh, Curse of Exhaustion, 4 cost. Enchant player can't cast more than one spell per turn, and I would definitely put this on something like a... Um, Perhaps somebody like a blue player who really relies, or even like a black player maybe who who uh, plays a lot of like combo-y type cards with a lot of tutors, but uh, blue is especially useful. Um, this card is especially useful against blue cards because blue really needs um, counter spells and stuff like that, so that uh, maybe that um, if they happen to have multiple counter spells in hand, then they can only counter one of your spells instead of multiple. Uh, Curse of the Nightly Hans. Three cost enchant player. Creatures enchanted player controls attack each turn if able. So another card that uh, gets your opponents to attack each other. Defensive formation. A one cost enchantment. Instead of the attacking player, you choose how creatures attacking you deal combat damage. Um, so this is really useful for uh, stacking blockers and then basically assigning all of the attacking creatures combat damage to one of the one of your blocking creatures, but then being able to kill that attacking creature as well. Um, also, it, it does come in useful with Trample, uh, because you can sort of assign all but one of the Trample damage to like a creature that you'd be blocking with, so the creature doesn't die and it takes away free damage from you. Uh, so that's good as well. Ghostly Prison, another mana drainer. Creatures can attack you unless their controller pays two colorless. Pretty good. Glory of Warfare, four cost as long as it's your turn. Creatures you control get plus two, plus zero. As long as it's not your turn, creatures you control get plus zero, plus two. So not only is this very defensive and, and it helps out with um, dealing with your opponent's combat damage, um, but it really buffs up your own stuff when it does... Uh, when it does switch to be your turn, so that you can actually deal some damage to an opponent and uh, finish that opponent off. Pariah is a great, great aura enchantment. Enchant creature, all damage that will be dealt to you is dealt to enchanted creature instead. So, um, you could even throw this on, like, your own creature, such as an Indomitable Ancients, where it won't die from, you know, 10 damage. Um, or if you really want to get rid of a monstrous, monstrous creature that your opponent controls, then uh, you can go ahead, put that on it, and... Um, you can just take all damage, and it'll be pretty, pretty awesome. Get rid of something like that. Soul Snare is a one cost. You can pay one, sacrifice, and exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. This is another combat deterrence card um, because you can, excuse me, you can get past the indestructible cards. Um, again, you can just exile target attacking creature. Sphere of Safety is a 5 cost. Uh, this has the potential to be even better than something like Ghostly Prison, but it is a mana drainer. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures, where X is the number of enchantments you control. So if you have something like um, a Ghostly Prison down, something like a Defensive Formation, then all of a sudden, in addition to the 2 that they would be paying with the Ghostly Prison, they are all of a sudden 
paying an additional two, uh, but that's only if you have two enchantments down, which you'll probably get two or three down at least in a match. True Conviction, uh, another card that really buffs up your own creatures, and the extra lifelink is is useful as well. If you're taking a lot of damage from uh, something like Darian's ability, you're just letting that combat damage slip through so that you have um, extra soldiers, but uh, True Conviction will definitely help you out with uh, your own combat assignment. Wars Tolls, a four-cost enchantment. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, tap all lands that player controls. Uh, and if a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures that opponent controls attack if able. So whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, tap all lands that player controls. I'm pretty sure that means that they can only cast maybe one spell. I'm I'm not sure if you tap lands in sequence or if you can tap lands all at once because um, if you tapped one land to cast just a one cost, um, that would obviously tap everything. But if you wanted to cast like a three cost thing, you, I, I wonder if you would tap all three lands at once and then you couldn't cast another spell because the rest of your lands would be tapped. Either way, this... Um, this card is incredibly good because it affects all opponents, not just target opponent. Um, so it really gives you a pacing advantage. Um, and then we have 38 lands here, your standard. So these are the cheaper dual lands of Boros. Uh, Boros Garrison is your is your uh, Boros Bounce Land. The Guildgate, just a standard dual land. Evolving Wilds will help you search for a Plains or Mountain, depending on what you need. 11 Mountains, 22 Plains. And you can see up here that I have a little bit of extra Mountains in here because um, I just want to be able to afford red spells if I come across them instead of just having always Plains. Uh, and then we got Sun Home, Fortress of the Legions. You can pay 4, tap it, and you will give a target creature double strike. So this can uh, help help one of your opponents uh, buff up the buff of their creature if if they happen to be attacking uh, another target opponent or it can help you out with your own uh, combat damage as well. Windscarred Crag is your standard dual land but you gain one life so that's um, okay as well. Uh, Benevolent Offering uh, this is one of those cards that gives your opponent a um, well actually three 1-1 one, one, uh, white spirit creature tokens with flying so again you're giving your opponents creatures to attack other opponents with and then you can then have that opponent or a different opponent depending on who your alliance is you know if you're talking to some people you can each gain two life for each creature you control so a lot of life gain this will also help you out if you're taking damage from again from something like darian's ability um and yeah great card for this for this type of deck uh, so the last thing that I kind of included in this deck was some extra removal in case you come across something that's that's really, really hard to get rid of. So I included cards like uh, Condemn, which is uh, put target attacking creature on the bottom of its owner's library. Its controller gains life equal to its toughness. So um, just, a, just an easy exile, and it also prevents possible grave mill as well. Um, and the other one that's a lot like Condemn that I included is the classic sword supply shares, just exile target creature, it controllers, its controller will gain life equal to its power. So extra removal in case you find something that you're really having difficulty getting off the board. Uh, and then we have Master Warcraft, a four cost instance, and you can only cast it before attackers are declared, and you will choose which creatures attack this turn, and you choose how creatures block this turn. So, um, this is good for just messing with your opponent's boards if they're attacking each other you can uh you can attack and block in the stupidest way possible eliminate as many creatures as possible and it's it, it's pretty good savage beating is a five cost play play the card only during your turn and only during combat so you can choose one uh creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn that is crazy good because double strike is an awesome ability untap all creatures you control and after this phase there is Oh, there is an additional combat phase. So either creatures you control gain double strike, or you can untap all creatures you control, and after, I mean, there is basically an additional combat phase. So um, you can, I mean, you can pay the extra two mana as well, so that you can basically have two combat phases in a row where your creatures have double strike, and that is insanely good. Um, okay, 
So moving on to the artifacts, something that's just really fun is Assault Suit, a four cost artifact equipment. The equipped creature will get plus two, plus two, has haste, can't attack your planeswalker you control, can't be sacrificed at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. You may have that player gain control of equipped creature until end of turn if you do untap it. So this basically gives um, like a very, very... Um, uh, very strong creature. Um, if you happen to have, I don't know, one of one of the stronger creatures that's in this deck, if you attach a salt suit to it, then all of a sudden you can pass that thing around and have it deal uh, damage to all of your opponents and really do the work for you. Cage Sun is your well. I mean, it's it's a mana doubler and it also helps a little bit with um, your your board control in terms of your creatures getting plus one plus one so um it's a six cost which is pretty expensive for an artifact but when but it basically doubles your mana um and this this specific one is whenever a lands ability so not just a basic land just your um non-basic lands as well so uh that is definitely good and this card actually dropped in price recently i think it went from like six dollars to like two dollars now so definitely um worth getting at the moment crawl space is your classic card that will screw with your opponents three costs no more than two creatures can attack you each combat so this is awesome if you can if you can use it against something like a token deck um you are definitely going to have the advantage in terms of combat um and otherwise it's it's usefulness is just so awesome it's it's great crown of doom three cost artifact whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn which means that you can um you can also pay two mana target player other than crown of doom's owner gains control of it uh, meaning that the so like your opponent would be the one that actually activates that ability not you once they gain control of it um and basically that will buff up all of your creatures all of your opponent's creatures to attack each other but not you which is pretty great gauntlet of power the same thing as cage sun it will double your mana so extra probability in terms of cards in the deck that will double your mana um it will give your creatures plus one plus one and this one is whenever a basic land is tapped for mana so um that sort of restriction for uh doubling your mana but it is a five cost which is pretty nice norns annex three and you can pay either white or two life and creatures can't attack you or planeswalking control unless their controller pays um one white or two life for each of those creatures so this is very similar to ghostly prison except if your opponents aren't running white mana they actually have to pay two life per creature to attack you which is so awesome pearl medallion your standard um make things less expensive card and then your classic soul ring which is a one cost add two colors to your mana pool all right last of all here we have our sorceries so um alliance of arms another join forces card again that sort of social aspect you 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 give your opponents a bunch of creatures so that they can uh use them on your other opponents and um uh, hopefully not against you, but uh, you you also get this number of soldiers as well. All right, and then uh, deploy to the front, which is a seven cost. Put X one one soldier tokens on the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. So um, something like this would combo with something like Alliance of Arms, which will give you a bunch of one one soldiers, and uh, also excuse me, also in just in commander overall, this is a very good card because um, if you have something like a four player commander, you know at at any one point in time, there's probably going to be at least, at least, seven creatures on the board. So, um, you're going to get, you know, easily seven one one tokens minimum, I would say. Um, alright. Insurrection is a very good finisher card. Uh, an eight cost, untap all creatures, and gain control of them until end of turn. They gain haste until end of turn. So you take control of literally all of the creatures on the board, and at this point, you can use them if. It, okay, so if you're able to cast an A cost, you have to assume that it's pretty late in the game, and if you. You know, late in the game, people are going to have stuff on the board. And with all of the creatures that you have, you can pretty much outright kill somebody with all of the creatures that you have with this card. So this is a incredibly good finisher or if you just want to you know knock out the first opponent with an a cost then you can do that as well uh marshall coup is a board wipe you can pay x white white put x one one soldier creatures on the battlefield if x is five or more destroy all other creatures um nice board wipe to get rid of creatures that you 
can't really get uh, remove very easily. So um, board wipes, you know, just for extra safety, I figured I, I should add one of these in here as well. Uh, mass calcify another board wipe destroy all non white creatures now these will destroy uh, the possible red creatures that you have out but the majority of the of, of the creatures in this deck are white so this is definitely going to be um, a very good card using uh, using it against your opponents tempt with vengeance uh, pretty much just a better version of alliance of arms you can pay x mountain so uh, put X11 creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield, so these are with haste. Each opponent may put X11 uh, elemental creatures tokens with haste onto the battlefield. For each player who does, put X11 uh, elemental creatures tokens with haste on the battlefield. So, um, for example, let's say I pay 7 towards this entire cost. That means X is 6 in this situation. So I'm going to get 611 elemental creature tokens with haste. Assuming that I use this on my turn, I can use these for the next combat. Um, now, for each player who also puts uh, six one ones onto the field, um, and I'm assuming that at least you know maybe like two people are are going to take this offer as well, because really, if 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 one person accepts this offer as well, then pretty much all of them are going to accept this offer because you can't just give two people an immediate advantage like that. You you kind of like your your opponents kind of have to stay even in that regard. So you know, best case scenario, let's say all four put six one ones onto the field. Well, all of a sudden, because of the second effect of the card, you have uh, let's see, so that'd be six, twelve, eighteen. 24, assuming a four-player match, 24 1-1 one, one tokens onto the field for a 7 cost. That is incredibly good, and um, j just an amazing card, Tempt with Vengeance. It's 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 like on the level of um, of Insurrection as, as, as to how good it is. So uh, definitely a good card there. And then uh, last of all, but maybe least, <laughs> we have uh, Heroes Remembered in the Maybe board. Uh, this card I threw in just for extra life gain. It's not actually in the deck, but just something that I was considering. Um, excuse me, I, I figured that you might want some life gain if you're going to be taking damage, um, because, you know, yeah, you might just end up taking some damage. And then last of all, uh, Incite War. I threw this out just because it's it's a little bit high cost for what it does, so you can choose one creature's target player controls attack heat. Creatures target player controls attack this turn if able. Creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. So um, you can use it very defensively, or you can use it to get your opponents to attack each other. But um, there are just better cards in the deck, I think, that 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 can be more useful than this card. Um, I just like it because it's... Um, or, I mean, rather, I, I don't like it as much because it's more of an instant, so it's just this turn and not necessarily not necessarily like a permanent thing, like something like a Warmonger Hellkite might provide, which is more of a more of a longer-lasting permanent. Uh, and, yeah, that is my Pillow 4 deck, guys. I hope you um, maybe got a few ideas from it, or even if you want to proxy the deck yourself, um, then feel free to go for it. I don't have this, car, this deck physically. Um, I did proxy this entire deck though so it's so it's all on like printed paper with colored ink um and i plan to use this soon in the near future uh and that's yeah that's pretty much it so uh definitely a fun deck definitely a very very social deck where you can where you can um you know banter with with your opponents and friends uh depending on who you're playing with and yeah so uh feel free to uh leave a rating on the video if you did enjoy it feel free to subscribe and all of that fun stuff and i will leave the link to this deck uh in the description if you want to i don't know if you want to just find it for some reason so it'll be down there and uh that's pretty much it so thank you all for watching and i will see you guys later